Chapter 20 To Mary White Minneapolis, Minnesota, November 4, 1888 Dear Daughter Mary, Our meeting is closed. I have on last Sabbath given my last discourse. There seemed to be considerable feeling in the congregation for the first time. I called them forward for prayers, although the church was densely packed. Quite a number came forward. The Lord gave me the spirit of supplication, and His blessing came upon me. I did not go out to meeting this morning. This has been a most laborious meeting, for Willie and I have had to watch at every point, lest there should be moves made, resolutions passed, that would prove detrimental to the future work. I have spoken nearly twenty times with great freedom, and we believe that this meeting will result in great good. We know not the future, but we feel that Jesus stands at the helm, and we shall not be shipwrecked. My courage and faith has been good, and has not failed me. Notwithstanding, we have had the hardest and most incomprehensible tug of war we have ever had among our people. The matter cannot be explained by pen unless I should write many, many pages, so I had better not undertake the job. Elder Olson is to be president of the General Conference, and Brother Dan Jones of Kansas is to help him. Elder Haskell will serve until Brother Olson shall come from Europe. I cannot tell what the future may reveal, but we shall remain for about four weeks in B.C. and get out a testimony that should come out just now without delay. Then we can see how matters move at the great center of the work. We are determined to do all we can in the fear of God to help our people in this emergency. A sick man's mind has had a controlling power over the General Conference Committee, and the ministers have been the shadow and echo of Elder Butler about as long as it is healthy and for the good of the cause. Envy, evil surmisings, jealousies have been working like leaven until the whole lump seemed to be leavened. Elder Butler, we think, has been in office three years too long, and now all humility and lowliness of mind have departed from him. He thinks his position gives him such power that his voice is infallible. To get this off from the minds of our brethren has been a difficult matter. His case will be difficult to handle, but we trust in God. Willie has gone a few miles to Minnehaha Falls, the first time he has had moment to be off sentinel duty. Committees, committees, committees. He has not yet come back. We have it quite cool here. We have all had colds, but we have had considerable sunshine and but very little rain. We have had good food and that which we would enjoy. Sarah is some better of her cold. I could not spend my time to nurse a cold, for I have been in the harness every day. Today, Sunday, I have not attended meeting, but have had to visit considerably. But I am grateful to God for the strength and freedom and power of His Spirit in bearing my testimony, although it has made the least impression upon many minds than at any period before in my history. Satan has seemed to have power to hinder my work in a wonderful degree, but I tremble to think what would have been in this meeting if we had not been here. God would have worked in some way to prevent this spirit brought to the meeting, having a controlling power. But we are not the least discouraged. We trust in the Lord God of Israel. The truth will triumph, and we mean to triumph with it. We think of you all at home, and would be pleased to be with you, but our wishes are not to be consulted. The Lord is our leader. Let him direct our course, and we will follow where he leads the way. I hope and pray that you may be improving in health and strength. The Lord is a mighty healer. His name shall be glorified. We leave this place tomorrow morning for Chicago by way of Iowa, calling upon Edson the same day, Monday. Monday eve at six o'clock go on our way to Chicago. Cannot get a sleeper before half past nine o'clock, which takes us into Chicago about nine o'clock. We go out to the mission, spend a few hours, then take the cars Tuesday eve for B.C. John has gone on his way to Chicago today and many others with him. We sent our trunks and luggage by the delegates. Now I shall write you something more as soon as we can after we reach B.C. Excuse this hasty line. Much love to all the family, especially Ella and Mabel. Mother P. 
P.S. I have one nice warm pair of stockings knit for Willie, and I have the second pair almost done. Just as I was folding this letter, this great blotch came to make it look badly. Mother.